Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Apa kabar pada kan? Alhamdulillah sehat. Alhamdulillah. Mulai setengah dua nak. Ya setengah dua.
Good afternoon, Sensei Arai. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Arai Sensei. Yeah, I'm ready. So making a public lecture on the classification method. Bapak Ibu, kita mulai public lecture-nya ya. Hmm? Ya, sil yes, silakan. Yeah. In English. Yeah. yeah, Prof Kohei, we will start our our public lecture today. Yeah, I'm ready. Oke, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome mm -hmm. to the public lecture, Artificial Intelligence Based Classification Methods, held by Engineering Faculty, Universitas Bengkulu. First of all, I would like to welcome our guest lecturer today, Professor Kohei Arai from Saga University, Japan. Thank you very much, Professor Kohei, for your time to be able to share some knowledge with us through public lecture today. We appreciate it a lot. Then the Honorable Pak Helm Mizar, the Dean of Engineering Faculty, University of Bungu, and all of participants today. I thank you very much for everyone who are attending today's public lecture online through Zoom. To start our lecture today, I would like to ask everyone to recite Basmalah together in hope that that will reward us with a lot of beneficial. Bismillah. Before we continue to the main agenda, I would like to invite Pak Kamiza, our five team, to do some new research and educating as well as opening our public lecture today. Pak Kamiza, I is yours. All right, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. The Honorable Arai Sensei, uh, our moderator today, Dr. Nokwal. And then our master ceremony today, uh, Ibu Devi. So I'm very happy that today we have opportunity to get a public lecture from Arai Sensei with the topic of artificial intelligence based classification method. Um, this uh, public lecture is a series basically. So this is the second one. Uh, because we, we have done it previously. So it is part of our KPI, our uh, yeah, our KPI in engineering faculties. Then we are encouraged to do like public lecture uh, from, from expert. So we are very happy that today we have opportunity to listen uh, material from 
Kohei Arai. Uh, Professor Kohei Arai, welcome to Bengkulu. Even mm -hmm. though even though it is virtually, but we are really expect that one day you will come here and you give uh, your uh, public lecture uh, yeah. offline, not through online like this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think that's all from me. And we are really expect that we will have another chance to have collaboration uh, with uh, Saga University, especially under Professor Kohei Arai. I think that's all from me. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pak Helmizar. Now, without any further ado, we will begin our main agenda today, public lecture, artificial intelligence, best classification methods. And I invite Pak Novalio Darata, PhD, to conducting this lecture as the moderator. I will give this room to Pak Noval. Please, Pak Noval. Thank you very much. Uh, again, we are uh, happy and welcome you uh, to discuss uh, artificial based method for classification. So there are many applications of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. It may be regression or classification. And mm -hmm. I think one can say that classification is one of the most important application. Mm -hmm. So uh, Professor Arai mm -hmm. is a scientist, author, and also professor. He has worked in mainly in Japan, but he was also a young professor in US, have mm -hmm. numerous patents, books, mm -hmm. journal papers. So we are very lucky today to have this opportunity uh, to listen and watch his uh, presentations. And we hope that uh, all the students can seriously uh, listen and uh, learn as much as possible. So without additional information, please, Arai Sensei, mm -hmm. uh, time is yours. Okay, sure. Um, can you give me a uh, right to share the image? Okay. Bu Debi, belum bisa di share ya? Bukan saya hostnya, Pak. Oh, hostnya. Uh, please, host, uh, can you allow uh, Professor Aray to share? Hey, ask Pak to do it. Okay. okay. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm talking about the AI-based image classification method. Yeah, there are plenty of the classification methods, and uh, sometimes we confuse which classification method is suitable for, appropriate for the uh, some specific problems. So that the I will introduce the all kinds of classification methods in my public lecture, and then I will introduce the um, some example of the classification. Um, in that case, I found the most appropriate classification method. Um, I will enhance the most preferable classification method to you. By the way, how many people are uh, familiar with the Python code? 
I am aware, and many students are also aware of Python. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. If you know how to use the Python code, then you can try the all the classification method because the most of the classification method are um in the uh, uh described in pa uh, Python code, and uh, I will introduce the URL for the uh, classification Python code underneath of the uh, scikit learn. Now, if you know the scikit learn, then you can um, download the Python code from the site and then install it um, under the specified environment and then import them you can use the classification method that is a way to use the classification method i introduced by the way there are so many models classification is a one of those regression model clustering model association rules these are models. Above that, there are two kind of learning method, supervised or unsupervised. And um, in addition to this, there is a reinforcement learning process. And then um, supervised method uh, uh, is uh, one of the uh, predictive method. On the other hand, the unsupervised method is underneath of the explanatory method. And then, uh, these are the MPK model and um, the predictive and uh, explanatory based method are highly related to the uh, supervised and the unsupervised method together with the uh, reinforcement learning. And then the one of the uh, models of supervised model is the classification and um, classify the something there are um if i got the data and uh, i classify the data into uh, several categories that is the method for classification regression on the other hand if I got the data, um, for instance, the past sales data, and by using the past sales data, we can predict the sales in the future or one year later. That is a regression model. And clustering, it's can be used for the device, the categories. Um, the given data can be discriminate the class A and class B. That is the clustering. In particular, the learning process is unsupervised. That's why we can not use the training data set. On the other hand, supervised method uses the training data set and then association rules comes from the unsupervised learning process because the unsupervised classification unsupervised learning method we cannot use 
the um, training sample so that the only the deviation among the data can be used for learning. Association rules is the same thing for the uh, classification method. Oops. Yeah, uh, target variables is the category, category. Yeah, category A, B, C, la, la, la. Predictors could be uh, any data type. There are so many algorithms for the classification. Decision tree is a famous um, algorithm for classification. And the rule induction, K nearest neighbor, naive Bayesian classification, neural networks, support vector machines. These are typical classification methods. I will introduce in more detail for the um, older algorithms. All these algorithms are, can be used for ensemble meta model. That means there are two kinds of learning process. One is a learning process with the training sample. The other one is an ensemble learning process. Ensemble meta model means that um, result from the different classification method by using these results we can learn again and create the ensemble meta model. Okay? So um, uh, we can use all these classification results input to ensemble meta model and uh, training learning process will be followed. Then we can get the more accurate classification result. In particular, for the image classification, there are mm, uh, 15 of the classification method. These are typical classification methods. Extra trees classifier is the one of those. Logistic regression, rich classifier, random forest, light GBM, other boost support based machine, gradient boosting, K nearest neighbor, naive base classification, linear discriminant analysis can be used for classification, decision tree, quadratic di discriminant analysis, and the dummy classifier. I will explain that in more detail about the uh, all these classification methods. By the way, rule induction is that, um, yeah, I mentioned this one here, association rules rule can be induced by this, uh, this, this one is the, uh, one of the example of the survived passengers on the Titanic. Um, this uh, looks like the decision tree. Firstly, we will check the gender, male or female, and the percentage ratio of survived passengers is a female, 36%, and the male. Um, next thing we have to care about is that um, age. Um, 9.5 years old or 
less than or larger than equal. And um, dead probability is at 61%. Uh, and um, CVSP rather than three or less than three survived the percentage ratio is 2%. By the way, this one here, 0 0.73 is the percentage ratio of the uh, female survived passenger. Female uh, passenger is the uh, 0 0.63 and um, 36 of the 0 0.73 percent of the passengers are survived. Uh, this is the one of the rule induction. Yeah, we can induce all these sub um, reason for the survive, reason for dead, some others. We can create the rules. Some major rule induction paradigm, paradigm is the association rule. As I mentioned before, this one here, association rule is the first one. And the decision rule um, proposed by Queen Lang, 1987, and um, hypothesis uh, testing algorithms we firstly we create the hypothesis and the test statistically and dead or alive we can estimate on close induction margin spaces rough set rules and this one here here is a very famous addition to rules some others some rule induction algorithms are um, abbreviated or these four um, names and abbreviations so that the, you can access to the, all these rule induction algorithms with the, um, these keywords. This one here, this slide shows the scheme of the neural network learning model. Here I have the input node um, for input node, weight fact, factor two, three, four, and one. And the summation, now these output at the uh, output node, then we can calculate the output value of y so that the y equal to one plus two x one plus three x two plus four x three. This is the typical neural network. In 1960s, we create the Saturday's neural network model. But um, only the simple model can be solved, but um, not for the complicated problems. That's why neural network is called toy problem solving. Toy problem. My simple problem can be solved, but not for the complicated problem. For instance, 0 to 9, 10 character, input to neural network, then we can identify which number is inputted. Such a simple problem can be solved by neural network, but alphabet 26 of the um, alphabet input to the neural network, we cannot solve it. 
that problem. Okay. And um, year 2006, there is a famous paper dealing with deep neural network. And uh, 2012, AlexNet was invented by Professor Dr. Hinton of the um, Toronto University in Canada create the deep learning of the uh, image understanding models. And then the image recognition error rate goes down sharply about um, by uh, 50%. Before that, the error, image recognition error is around 30%. But um, AlexNet deep learning used classification method allows to recognize the image with the 15% uh, of the error rate. It's a remarkable improvement in terms of the image recognition accuracy. Nowadays, um, there was the competition among the institute in the world to get the uh, more, much more small number of the image recognition error rate. Um, it becomes 2.5% of the image recognition error rate. On the other hand, the visual perception by human error rate is typically 5%. So uh, twice much accurate uh, image recognition error rate was achieved by the deep learning based image recognition method. That is a current status. The neural network is very, very resembled to the human brain neurons. Here I have the slide show the neurons and the synapse, neuron, synapse, neuron, synapse. Such this, um, um, the stimulation can be transferred to next neuron, to next neuron through the synapse. That is our brain is doing. The length of the uh, neuron and synapse, um, 200 million of the uh, kilometers in our brain. And uh, we do have the uh, 0 0.2 trillion of the uh, neurons in our brain. As you know, the uh, hardware TensorFlow processing unit, the TPU, and the uh, density of the uh, TPU on the uh, one chip, IC chip, 2.54 by 2.54 centimeters square. We can put the TensorFlow processing unit. Google developed such a sophisticated hardware IC chip TensorFlow on it. This is the example of the iris classification. As you know, there are three kinds of the iris. Setosa is one of those. 
Vase color, the second one. Virginica is the third one. Output layer, the number of the output layer is three. Hidden layer, you can, you can uh, design the number of the uh, node in the hidden layer one and the hidden layer two, hidden layer n. And here I have the input layer. There are four kinds of input data, petal length, petal width, separate length, separate width, and constant. And then by using all these explanatory variables, with the um, correct answer as the training data sample, training data set to um, a, uh, a great amount of the training data set, learning through the learning process, uh, it becomes the learning model for the uh, iris classification. That is the deep learning based image classification, in particular for the iris flower. I will show you the example later on. Procedures of the learning process of the neural network is the following. Firstly, we create input node output node, sometimes hidden layer node. And then there um, become, um, here comes the input data, x1 equal to one, two, one, three, one, input to the uh, input layer. And the weighting facts, weighting two, Waiting three, waiting four, and the constant node waiting factor equal to one. Summation and output value y is comes out. And then y in this case is the uh, 15, but the correct answer of the output should be 10 so that the, there is the discrepancy between both. This error E plus five is propagate to these weighting factor. That is a back propagation method for learning process of the neural network. That is a neural network typical neural network and deep learning as well. Uh, let me move on to the logistic regression-based image classification. Here I have the example of the data, black circle, black circle here. And then if I got the logistic regression model, red line shows the result. But if I have only the linear regression model, blue line is the output. So in this case, linear regression model doesn't work for the discrimination of the example of data. On the other hand, logistic regression model allows us to discriminate the example data. Uh, logistic regression, there is the cost function. Cost function is a measure of the how wrong the model is in terms of its ability to estimate the relation between X and Y. Here I have the underfitting optimal fitting 
and the overfitting. We don't need the underfitting. Alright. Go. And Go. Who's talking? I am talking. Don't interrupt. We don't need the overfitting. Optimal fitting we should find by using the logistic regression. Overfitting is highly related to variance of the data and the um, bias error caused underfitting like this and this and like this blue line shows the linear regression model red line is a logistic regression model with optimal regression model if we really have such an optimal logistic model then we can and get the uh, optimal fitting. Uh, here I have the uh, large regression. Um, under the title, there is the URL for the uh, rich regression model. And the uh, regression model, this regression model, is included in the site to learn. So you can download immediately and uh, um, quite simple manners. Um, here the linear regression model, orange line and blue line shows the best fit of the uh, rich regression model. So um, um, likely, uh, like, um, Logistic more regression model, rich regression model, uh, allow us to find the optimal fitting model. Same thing for the lasso. This is a linear model. This is the bridge model. Same thing for the lasso regression model. Um, Rich regression model reduce the partial regression coefficient. But um, lasso regression model can be interpreted as a performing linear regression by selecting variables. That's the difference. Here I have the example of the uh, rich regression model x1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all these um, data are used for the rich regression model. The lasso model, um, this three, these three can be used for the lasso model, no other. Such a um, selection can be made available for the uh, lasso regression model. That's a difference. Here I have the slide of showing the decision tree. Um, that survived the passengers on the Titanic. Um, gender, Gini, samples, variable, class. Class means the uh, dead or survived. Age, 13, below 13, and uh, P class, below 2.5, then survived. Then not survived. And uh, if we 
uh, check the Gini uh, is uh, 0 0.5 dot survive, 0 0.1 survive. Uh, this one here, age is less than 13, Gini equal to 0 0.27, not survive. Gini 0 0.493, survived. Saturday's decision tree can be made available for the um, decision tree, um, death or survive. Such a classification can be done with the uh, Saturday's decision tree. And uh, this one is uh, another example of the golf player. If the weather is sunny, temperature 85 Fahrenheit, humidity 85, windy falls, then the golfer doesn't play the golf. Same thing for the sunny overcast rainy sea, um, and uh, it totally depends on the weather condition, temperature, humidity, and wind. And um, we can create the decision tree for which golf player will play the golf. Such a decision tree can be created. The result is here. Outlook, overcast rain and sunny. And uh, for the sunny uh, weather condition, humidity is checked followed by and uh, 70, uh, 77.5 less than or larger than, humidity, the larger than 77.5, then the golf player will not play the golf, such and such. This one here is a totally identical to this table. As I mentioned before, the genie impurity. Genie equal 0 0.338 and the genie 0 0.5, 0 0.1. What's the genie stand for? Genie is a measure of the impurity. Every um, decision tree has the uh, split tide. Here's a split, here's a, another split. Such every split ties to make child node more pure. Here, more pure. So that the, um, we can calculate the Gini and the entropy and the misclassification error. Um, if um, totally depends on the probability, zero to one, and um, this one here is the genie impurity. This one here is the entropy. You must know the entropy. Equation is the minus P logarithmic function of the P. That is the uh, entropy. And the Gini is about half the maximum point of the Gini impurity function is 0 0.5, just the one um, half. And uh, this one here is the misclassification error, red one. And impurity measure. Uh, all these three can be used for the calculation 
know the impurity. The difference among these is very little, so that the, I would recommend you to use that genie impurity. The decision tree allows us to create the rule so that the, this is the kinds of rule inductions. Rule one, two, three, four, five. Rule five, for example, if the outlook is sunny and the humidity is less than 77.5, then yes, the player plays golf. Such a rule can be derived from this decision tree. Then we can also create the rule equation. Um, R1, R2, R3, so that the, these are outlook, sunny, rain, and wind con windy conditions, humidity conditions, such a um, restriction is expressed as RXRK. Then um, rule can be expressed with this equation. This is a decision tree. Approach firstly will be able to input the data set. And um, from that data set, we can extract the rule, rule induction. Or decision tree model will be created, then rule can be derived from the decision tree. There are two ways for get the uh, rule inductions. That is the decision tree. This is the decision tree one, two, and three, four, la la la, and decision tree n. So that the there are so many trees that is called forest. The next classification method is called random forest. Also, this random forest classifier is under this of the psychic learning, ensemble learning. That's why uh, here the URL, you can download random forest classifier software code from this URL. And uh, as I mentioned before, there are plenty of addition tree. And then we could get the result from the addition tree one. The result is a class A. And the addition tree two output answer is the class B. And the tree M output the answer class B and the majority body. This is the ensemble me, uh, learning, final answer of the class. In this case, the majority is a class B. That's why the final class is a class B. That is the London forest. And London forest, typical London forest has thousands of the trees, decision trees. This is the example of the decision tree classification result, random forest, and um, uh, um, extra trees and other boost. I didn't mention the extra trees and other boost 
Beta 1 are explained the algorithms for extra trees and other boosts. Uh, take a look at these data. These three kinds of data are the same for the four classification method. And this one here is a misclassification around here. And the random forest as well. And the extra trees. Other boost. The difference among them is a quite obvious. Decision tree has a um, clear boundary of the red, yellow, and blue classes. But um, some of the uh, random forest has the different and uh, discrimination functions the almost the same as the uh, decision trees that the forest shows. This one here is very simple to this one. And this one here, a little bit different. And um, this misclassification was removed for the London forest, so that the classification accuracy of the London forest is better than the decision tree. And uh, in comparison between the extra trees and the London forest, there are some improvements in, com uh, in com comparing with the London forest. Extra trees is much more accurate clarification method. Um, discrimination function is more, much more appropriate rather than random forest. That's why I recommend you to use uh, extra trees, not the uh, random forest. On the other hand, take a look at the other boost. The quite different discrimination function is here. Right here, red circle data um, show the uh, misclassification. Same thing for this. Some, some of the blue class was um, mistaken. And the uh, same thing for this quite different from the boundary layer. Uh, in this case, the boundary layer are very similar to the uh, random forest. Other boost is uh, quite similar to the random forest. But um, I would like to enhance the advantage of the extra trees is the uh, high accuracy of the classification performance. And the extra trees classification is also included in the site drawn and some blue extra trees classifier. So that the URL is here. I recommend you to use this extra trees classifier rather than the other classification methods. Random forest uses a large number of the decision tree trained with the randomly sampled training data. So um, not the whole data. Random forest select sample the training data set and learning process. And then uh, uh, sample and large boot, bootstrapping samples. Bootstrapping means randomly sampling the training data with replacement, replaced to the uh, other um, 
sample data, randomly select and sample from the training data set, not to use the whole data. That is the weak point of the random forest. On the other hand, extra trees uses whole training data set. That's a difference. And the repeat step one, two, K times, K times number of the uh, epoch. The second um, step two is the grow a digital tree from bootstrapping samples, perform the following tasks on each node, randomly exactly uh, extract the features without the constructions by maximizing information gain nodes are divided using features that result in the optimal decision according to object function and then bp one step one two step one two step one two k times and majority voting that is the random forest. In this case, as I mentioned before, the bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is defined as the statistical desampling technique uh, from the training sample random forest algorithm. Figure out the sum of the training samples, not the whole data with the replacement, the training data set A is replaced to training sample data B, such and such. And the bootstrapping, uh, you can find uh, bootstrapping software code from this URL underneath of the site to run you can find the bootstrapping. Ensemble model, ensemble learning. As I mentioned before, random forest ensemble learning is that uh, just voting, majority voting. That is the kinds of wisdom of the crowd. There are so many different trees, these young trees, so many crowd, crowd, so that the, we can take the uh, majority. That is a uh, wisdom of the crowd. Meta learning, you know, each decision tree are weak learning, weak learning, plenty of weak learning through the ensemble learning. It becomes strong learn. Reduce the model generation error, ensemble method, then Python can be derived from this URL. Ensemble model input data set, uh, base model one, two, three, four, ten, 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 uh, dot, uh, and base model M and the output one, two, three, and M and majority voting or function X. This is the ensemble model. Um, majority voting is a one of the ensemble learning model, but um, there are some others. And for the regression model, we can use the continuous value. Majority voting of the ensemble model uses the discrete model. That's a totally different ensemble learning process. Here I have the uh, iris data set. Set to with the Saturday's flower. Iris bar color is like this. And then bar nika. Iris looks like this. 
and uh, there are two kind of variables. Objective variables is that uh, iris set to color, iris barge color, iris barge nika, and the explanatory variables, there are four. Heter length, heter width, and uh, separ length and separ width. Um, by using these four explanatory variables, we can classify the iris flower into three categories, setosa, bajkara, bajinika. That is a classification. Here I have the example of the separ length, separ width, petal length, petal width. And here I have the objective variables. Um, these are zero, these are two, la la la, some others. And then classify using the decision tree. The result is here. And um, underneath of the result from decision tree classifier, there is the London Forest classifier result. Which is the better classification performance or accuracy? It's quite obvious. London Forest showed the uh, much more, in this case, as you can see, these are just the two of them are misclassified. London Forest, there are six misclassification results. So in this case, the London Forest it, uh, accuracy is not so good. Other boost classifier is also situated in the cyclotron ensemble learning process. Other boost classifier. Uh, this is an example of the boosting algorithms. Here I have the addition tree one trained classifier. Addition tree one result is to be an uh, input data of the decision tree number two. Here I have the result from the decision tree two, and then the output becomes an input to the decision tree number three. And trained class file, we can get the three types of the training uh, trained class file. Then waiting some some um, fast decision tree multiplied by zero point three three as a weight. Second decision tree waiting factor is a zero point five three seven. Waiting factor of the decision tree number three is at 0 0.42 and if the weighted sum is greater than zero or not we can create such this classification models um minus 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 data can be classified to minus plus 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 data and B classified into the plus class. This is the other boost classified result and ensemble learning. Let me move on to the support vector machine. Here I have 12 data, blue circle, green circle, all plotted 
in the two-dimensional plane, x and y, and then I can draw the linear line. This is called the discrimination function. The most nearest data is called the support vector. Here, the another support vector here. And then we can draw red line, blue line, or green line. And then the most farthest uh, uh, distance of the uh, most closest discrimination function is called the margin. If the margin is greater than h1 of the uh, discrimination function, then h2 is much more appropriate discrimination function. H3, it, um, this one here is the very, very distance between the discrimination function of H3 and black data. So um, we cannot select this discrimination function. So the uh, maximize the margin. Now, the, uh, through the learning process is called support vector machine. Next thing I would like to show you is that um, K nearest neighbor classification method. Here the data plotted on the two dimensional plane. A and B, and the um, unknown vector is situated here. Then K nearest neighbor, if the K equal to three, um, this uh, unknown data uh, should be the center or centroid. Um, we can create the circle uh, which, uh, in which the three data is involved. And then this data, two data, are classified to A. And uh, only the one data is classified as B. That's why majority logic um, give us this unknown data have to be included in the class A. That is the algorithm for the K nearest neighbor. If the K equal five, then the circle centered in this uh, with the uh, unknown vector in which the five data are included. In this case, the class B data, the number of the class B data is three. On the other hand, class A is just a two. That's why K, if the K equals five, then K nearest the neighbor classification method um, decide to uh, unknown vector have to be included in the class B. That is the uh, algorithm for the K nearest neighbor. Let me move on to the uh, naive base. Naive base. is based on the base probability functions. In this case, um, 
A probability under the condition of the B equal to the B probability under the condition of A existing probability of A divided by existing probability B. These are a priori probability. On the other hand, this one here is a posteriori probability. So a base equation. means that um, we can calculate posteriori probability by using the prior probability. That is the uh, base theorem. And then maximize the posteriori probability. We can draw this discrimination function. That's why we can uh, classify all these data into uh, three categories, red, blue, and orange. This is a naive base classifier. Another example of a naive base classifier is a text classification, a great game. We can put the tab of the sport. Great game means a kinds of the sport. The election was over, not a sport. Very cream match sports. A cream but forgettable game sport. It was a cross election, not a sport. Such a tagging can be available based on the naive base classification. Maximize posterior probability. That is a key issue for the naive base classification. Next thing, classification method is that a linear discriminant analysis based classification. You have plenty of data. Analyze the linear discriminant functions, A and B, B and A, A and C, C and A, C and B, B and A, such and such by using the Fisher distance, we can calculate the distance among the data. By using the Fisher distance, we can create the linear discriminant functions, blue line. That is called linear discriminant analysis-based classification. There are some other classification methods, so-called normal discriminant analysis. Normal means the Gaussian probability density function-based discriminant function. Here's an example of the linear discriminant analysis and the quadratic discriminant analysis. The difference, um, by the way, this one here is original data. Blue class center is situated here. On the other hand, red cross data center is situated here, as you can see. And then linear discrimination analysis based classification create the discriminant functions with the linear function. But a quadratic second order of the discrimination function can be derived from the quadratic 
is doing an analysis based classification. That's why the QDA of the classification performance is better than LDA. That is the truth. Regression and the classification with old ML. Old ML means that all kinds of learning model is applied to the uh, input data. All kinds of the classification method applied to the data and the classification performance of all the classification method created, calculated, then the most highest accuracy of the classification method you can get. That is the old ML. Google created such this old ML, machine learning. But um, I strongly recommend you to use the pie carrot red color is the name of the uh, same functionality of the uh, classification methodology called pie cat so um it can be downloaded from GitHub download the site then install it and import and use the pie cat so that the I would like to strongly recommend you to use the Pi character rather than the auto ML. The difference between both is the uh, computer resources. Auto ML need a huge amount of computer resources, but Pi carrot very very smart, very very right compared to than O to ML. That's why I did name. Here I have the prediction of the Cassidy pattern deviation by using the pi carrot. Um, last September, last month, I published a paper dealed with the pi carrot classification method for classify the Cassidy pattern deviation, good or bad. Such a discrimination was um, performed by using I can't. Firstly, I have to explain what is the Kurume Kasuri pattern is? This picture shows the Kurume Kasuri pattern. There are plenty of the textile. And um, for example, this Kurume Kasuri pattern, yeah, textile shows the circle, circle, another circle. But some pattern deviation or fluctuation are observed. And uh, we um, feel the much more comfortable than the uh, strict circle. Strict circle is boring, but uh, such this fluctuation is, seems to me that's um, very comfortable. The specific characteristics of the Kurume Kasuri pattern is the, uh, based on this fluctuation. And uh, in the machine, breathing, Kurume Kasuri room, a skilled craftsman is in charge 
the multiple sound by hearing self, visually checking the pattern division and adjust the uh, manual. But um, we intend to adjust automatically. Then the more much more comfortable pattern deviation will do better to create. Acquire the camera image, detect the pattern deviation, and run just before exceeding the permissible limit, then we can change the um, craft tensions. And skilled craftsmen adjust warp tension. Such a warp tension have to be controlled automatically. That is our goal. Here I have the example of the pattern deviation. Close-up image is here. This one here is comfortable, but this one here is not comfortable, not exceed the permissible threshold. So that the, in this case, we have to change the craft tension, warp tensions within the limit of the comfortable or acceptable craft pattern fractuation. That is our purpose. It's not a good control has to be replaced to the artificial intelligence AI. Adjust the warp tension by artificial intelligence automatically. That is our goal. Here I have the again acceptable fluctuation and comfortable fluctuation and not acceptable beyond the threshold of the acceptable range. Not acceptable fluctuation. That's why I made the clarification between the uh, unacceptable and acceptable. Red square being the irregular, non acceptable. And the green square means acceptable range of the fluctuation. Here I have the input training data set. All these are acceptable. Underneath, these are bad data, good or bad. We have we'd better to classify the two categories. 180, the training sample is used for training data set for artificial intelligence, deep learning. And the 30 of the test samples are used for the performance evaluation. Here the network architecture, three by three convolution neural network, again, and maximum pooling convolution neural network, again, and maximum pooling and flatten. Uh, here I have the 80 by 80 of the 
pixels of input data, and then flatten um, 18,496 pixels by 512. 512 by 2, and the uh, output layer, there are two node. One is good, the other one is bad. Fully connected, layer. Preliminary result show the constant correct classification equal to 91.7. In this case, convolution neural network, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. And then here the loss function. The other one is accuracy. Red color shows the training uh, validation accuracy. On the other hand, blue color line shows the training performance. So uh, validation accuracy is much lower than the training performance as usual. And here I have the confusion met metrics, five and six are correct classified. And one is misclassified. 91.7. It's not good enough for the classification performance. That's why I try to use pi caret. As I mentioned before, pi caret includes all kinds of the classification methodology, starting from the extra tree, logistic regression, bridge classifier, Random forest, light GBM, other boost, support vector machine, GBM, K nearest neighbor, naive base, linear discriminant analysis, quadratic discriminant analysis, decision tree classifier, and dummy classifier. And um, there are many um, methods for classification performance evaluation. One is accuracy, AUC, recall precision, F1 score value, Kappa value, MCC, Matthews correlation coefficient, and elapsed time, TT. When AI is given data with a good balance between positive and negative, 50% of the positive and 50% of the negative, and the data with extremely unbalanced positives and the negatives, for instance, 10% positive, 9% negative, the ACC, we create a heat map and uh, compare the performance evaluations given by MCC. That's why we strictly taking the MCC is a good measure for the uh, classification performance evaluation. The results show that uh, while MCC strictly evaluated AI performance, ACC is more likely to overestimate it. And this property is more pronounced in unbalanced data set. Specifically, while MCC doesn't give a high rating of 0 0.6 or higher unless it correctly determines both positive and negative results. 
ACC, on the other hand, gives a high rating even to AI that cannot correctly classify even one positive result. That's why I focused on the MCC. Here I have the classification performance. On the left hand side, you can see the models, extra trees, starting from the extra trees, logistic registration data, and then classifier. Here I have the sorting result with the MCC. The highest one is extra trees. That's why I recommend you to extra trees classifier rather than other. The most of case I tried to use extra trees classification methodology for image classification and uh, text classification, la, la, la. I found the most be uh, best performance of the classification extra trees shows. That's why I did it. And uh, another factor, accuracy, AUC, recall, precision, F score, kappa value, and elapsed time. Elapsed time is not so huge. Computer resources is needed for the extra trees. That's why, and that is the also another reason why I recommend to use the extra trees. For those who are not familiar with the PP, FM, FP, TM, I will show you this one here. True positive, false negative. False positive, true negative. We, if we evaluate TP, FP, FM, TM, then we can create such this heat map. And then we can draw such this probability with the threshold. This one here is the same thing. By the way, extra trees algorithms that fit the each edition tree on the whole training data set, whole training data set. It's totally different from the London forest. Like London forest, the extra trees algorithms will randomly sample the features at each split point of the decision tree. This is the same, same thing for the London forest. But unlike London forest, which uses greedy algorithm to select an optimal split point, the extra tree algorithm is select a split point at London. These are totally different from the random forest. Ensemble learning, there are three kinds of learning um, issues. One is a bagging, second one is the boosting, the third one is a stacking, these three. Bagging is a train each predictor with a randomly set data is called bagging. Build the predictor sequentially and train it to correct the error of the previous predictor. That is called boosting. As I mentioned before, the decision tree output becomes input to the uh, another decision tree input that is called boosting. And the stacking uses the predictor that combine the result of the multiple predictors. Bagging 
classifier is an ensemble meta estimator that fits base classifiers each on random subset of the original data set and then aggregate their individual predictions to form a final prediction. That is the bagging. Pasting, bagging, random subspace is a key issue for bagging classifier. Pasting is a same register on the select different training instance that is called custom. And then finally, uh, even for the extra trees classifier, we need to tune the hyperparameters. As I mentioned before, the extra trees classifier has the parameters, reading functions, reading factor. We need to optimize the parameters, hyperparameters. I recommend you to use Opportuna, which allows us to optimize the hyperparameters so that the extra trees classifier I recommend you to use and the Optuna to use for the hyperparameter tuning is two, Optuna and extra trees. This uh, pair of the method are highly recommendable method for classification. For instance, in that um, Kasumi, uh, Kurume Kasuri pattern fluctuation classification. There are some of the parameters force, um, bootstrap force, and uh, alpha weighting factor, class weight, Gini creation, la la la. I have set these parameters by using Opportuna. Opportuna, by the way, um, allow us to find the most appropriate hyperparameters by using the Bayesian optimization automatically. That's why I recommend you to use. Here I have the learning curve and training performance and uh, test of performance. Um, training score and the cross validation score is here. And the test performance validation curve is here. And the um, cross validation score is here. So um, it's almost, almost one. And this one here is the uh, almost one at uh, approach two. That's why extra trees classifier show the best classification performance. Here I have the rock card. Rock uh, stand for receiver operating characteristics. The, this one here is a rock card, green color, Dot is a color and the blue and uh, dot is a green and the blue solid. These are rock curve. Rock curve can be drawn with the horizontal axis of the false positive and the vertical axis true positive. If you create two positive and force positive, then you can create the rock card. And then the area of under the rock curve is called AUC, 
area and the rock curve. This metric was used for binary classification. And the classification performance can be evaluated with the n fold cross validation or fold out method for classification performance evaluation. Here's a result of the n fold cross validation and for the zero to nine, 10 different division of the uh, training performance uh, training data set is used for learning process in rest of the uh, divided data are used for the evaluation of the uh, test of performance. Yeah, MCC, I have focused on um, equal to one, equal to one. Some of the um, division classification performance of MCC showed the almost one. That's why it's very high accuracy. Here I have the confusion matrix. Uh, 17 and 16 are correct classification, except three misclassified result. The number of the good sample is 17, but the number of the bad sample is 19. That's why the three of the bad training as input data is misclassified, classified in two good pattern. Of the 180 training data, 20% are used as a validation data. So there are 36 validation data. Of the 36 cards, 17 are zero, good. And the 19 or one is that is bad. All good answers were correct. One, eight, uh, 17 against zero. And the three bad answers were incorrect. Three misclassification and 16, the correct classification. In summary, I recommend you to use the pie carrot with the uh, opportunity for the hyperparameter tuning. And then you can find the extra trees classifier included in the pie carrot show the best classification performance. In this case, Kasuri pattern fluctuation classification AUC is equal to 0 0.98 recall 9 8 0 0.9 and 8 8 precision 0 0.97 F1 score 0 0.91 in time elapsed the time is 0 0.6 so that the Extra trees classification method doesn't require the huge computer resources and show the highest performance of the classification. That's why extra trees classifier is that feature split values are chosen randomly. This is a feature of the extra trees classifier makes us the best classification performance. Instead of using the genie or entropy to split the data to compute locally optimal values, then average randomly set the split values. This is a feature, another feature of the extra trees classifier. Finally, I strongly recommend you to try 
by a caret with open channel. That is the conclusion of my talk, of my public lecture. That's it. Thank you for listening. That's all for now. Thank you. If you have the questions, please let me know through the chat. Okay, thank you, Professor Ara Sensei. Uh, I think Dr. Nopal will lead the, the discussion. Oh, yes. Dr. Nopal, please welcome. Ah, I think it's not far wrong. No far, must mute. Must see the mute. No far. Um, please let me know your questions in English, not in this Indonesian language. I think Dr. Nopal had problem with, with his uh, mic. Test, test, test. Ah, ah, that's good, that's good. Okay. Ah, thank you very much, uh, Arai Sensei. Uh, there was a detailed and complete comparison of a lot of uh, classification mm -hmm. image. So yeah. uh, I myself uh, learned uh, many new methods and I hope mm -hmm. also students will understand why uh, in the end, uh, one method was selected as uh, the best one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So please, uh, any on, any student, please uh, uh, ask Professor Sense, Professor Arai, if you have a question or a confusion. Uh, You have problem in English, I may translate it. You can ask it in Bahasa, then I will translate it. I have some experience using uh, uh, random forest. But it was for uh, regression actually. Mm -hmm. uh, what about what about the extra trees crowd fire? I have never used extra that that one. I have never used it. So extra trees crowd fire is included in the psychic run. Okay. But if you know the Python and psychic run, you can try the extra trees classification method. Yeah. It does work and oh. show the highest classification performance. That's why I recommend you to use. My question is, mm -hmm. uh, if the job is a regression, mm -hmm. is it still the best one or, or not? What do you think? Yeah. Uh, I also had the uh, another public lecture uh, subject mm. that is the uh, regressive analysis regression the other day i talked with the uh, faisal hadisan mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, i um, i can make a lecture on the classification method and regression method Mm -hmm. And I try to use the extra trees for the uh, regressive analysis. It does work. 
It does also work. Case, yes. Um, it's um, the uh, it shows the good uh, regression and uh, error, regression error is very small compared to the land of forest or linear regression or boosting algorithms. I compared already. And um, my final conclusion is that uh, we will be better to use the extra trees for the regressive analysis. Okay, then I will try it. My job is actually uh, prediction. It is uh, electricity consumption predictions. Uh -huh. I will try. Yeah. I tried uh, CNN, I tried Random Forest, I tried mm -hmm. LSTM, mm -hmm. uh, but I never tried this uh, extra tree. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very, very rare to use the extra trees. Okay. It's not um, uh, popular it's not algorithms popular. for their classification and the regressive analysis. That's why I noticed that extra trees showed the best performance in terms of the regressive error and the classification performance. Well, I should, uh, in next months, I should try it uh, and see if it is a really good in my case. Mm. Yeah, I should. How about students, please? Uh, if you want to ask, uh, raise your hand so we can uh, give you the opportunity. Shaha, Shahara, do you have some question? Hello? I cannot hear you. Shahara? Sorry. Yeah, she is talking. She's but, talking, uh, but yeah. For Ramo. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, chat, meeting chat? Meeting chat, chat. Let me ask. Yeah, boleh juga bertanya di chat ya. Di chat ya. You, you can also... Uh, Put your question on the chat room. <coughs> Rocky? Rocky? Rocky Subrandani? Uh, but they have problem with unmute. They want to speak, but uh, it has to be done manually. Okay. Can you simply write your question? Rocky, tulis saja lah di, di, di chat. Ibu Debbie? Ya, yeah, Pak. Bisa nggak ini unmute-nya mandiri aja, bukan host. Ini kayak ini harus host yang mengunmute. The participant cannot unmute himself. Only host can unmute. Okay, okay. Rocky, please. Rocky. Hello. Mona. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, Rocky. Okay, please, Rocky. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, okay, Thank you for for the opportunity. Do you understand so the far, what was the message? 
Uh, so that you realize the understand. Oops. Susupana, susupawa. Anki puspawan. Rocky? Oh. Rocky? Do you have yes, some no. questions? Yes. Yes, please. If you have some question, you can tell us. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so far, uh, uh, I still have no question in this, uh, on this workshop. Okay, you don't have a question, okay. Maybe, maybe another. Okay, how about other student? Uh, uh, anyone? Please raise your and can I ask the students? Yeah, Raden, 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 please. No, Raden, your voice is not audible. Mm -hmm. Okay. We cannot hear you, Raden Muhammad Ilham. Or uh, maybe Ara Sensei would like to ask something to the student. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have the lecture of the image classification in your university? Apakah uh, di prodi kalian ada kuliah tentang image classification? We have image processing class, mm -hmm. image processing in general, not yeah. the classification. I see. I yeah. See. Yeah, we have it in the uh, electrical engineering department. We also yeah. have it in the uh, informatics uh, department. I see. Mm -hmm. So that the your students are not familiar with the image classification. Not really. They also learn AI, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. In general, it is a kind of introduction. Mm -hmm. Lecture on uh, artificial intelligence, but not specific to a particular uh, topic. Now, one of the uh, major application of the artificial intelligence is the uh, image classification. Anthony, do you want to ask? No. Yeah. But they they generally uh, actually in the final project some of them are actually doing image uh, classifications. I think. Anissa. No. So AI is a uh, is used uh, in many applications. Some of them are classification. Yes. Uh, yeah, other sense I maybe I, I just want to give a short question. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not really get to know with uh, AI or image classification, especially. Mm -hmm. I'm from mechanical engineering, basically, but but I, I know, see. yeah, mm -hmm. but I know that maybe this image classification. Uh, knowledge is usable for like medic medical application like awesome. yeah could you please could you please uh, elaborate more to give like more understanding to our student about mm -hmm. the application of the 
I don't know, maybe image processing or AI in uh, with uh, how to say uh, the the application of yeah image processing or a or AI to to medical uh, application. Could you please medical application and yeah. um, um what about the uh, uh, face recognition for the authentication? You yeah, we yeah. can identify identify the person with their face image. In that case, we need you know, image clarification. And um, the image clarification, uh, face image clarification allow us to authentify the person. Um, in the supermarket, there is the um, face image authentication systems are installed in so that the supermarket can provide the uh, product without any registration. Because the uh, customer can be authentified with their face. That is one of the examples. And um, X-ray um, image, MRI image, and um, as well as the CT scan image, the error rate of the uh, cancer detection by artificial intelligence is better than the human. such and such, and image classification is wide variety of the application in medical and uh, security and privacy issues, some other. And uh, yeah, application of the artificial intelligence, uh, which is related to the image classification, I will, um, I can show you the next, next public lecture, as well as the regressive analysis for the uh, uh, sales uh, predictions, sales and um, charm customer profiling, we need to conduct the regressive analysis. In some case, the time series analysis have to be done. In that case, um, most uh, um, applicable uh, method for the regressive analysis, I can show you. Such and such. By the way, the previous um, special lecture I made, at the time I explained the state of the earth of the artificial intelligence and uh, AI applications. The one of the application field is that some um, medical, um, medical image diagnostic and uh, biometric uh, authentication, some others, so that the, I would better to refrain the artificial intelligence applications and deeply explain the regressive analysis and image classification. This time, I focus on the only the image classification methodology, but um, much more wide scope of the uh, talking um, issues, 
will be um, more preferable for your university students, I think. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, very, very, very clear. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Arai Sensei. Uh, Raden Muhammad Ilham Dismi. Would you like to have some questions? By the way, in the chat box, there is a one question in yeah. English. In English, yeah, I will. I will try to read it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the future, is mm -hmm. there AI that can have its own mind, like human? Yeah. Okay. Um, How do you think about it? Human level intelligence. Yeah. Ray. Cartwell, you know, the famous scientist, AI scientist, estimate that would occur in year 2045. That is called singularity. It, um, it will be occurred. The human brain Artificial intelligence is uh, overcome the uh, our human brain. Artificial intelligence is beyond our. Massive zoom, I mean, I mean, that is mo not my. Ray Cartwell said, "Hello, I want to ask as." has been discussed, bootstrap is a statistical resampling technique. Yes, that is, which involves taking samples randomly from the certain data set. The question is, why do you have to do resampling? Um, not the resampling, replacing, and do it randomly. Yes, it can done can be done randomly that is the answer to anthony the questions in the future is the ai that can have its own mind ah oh, yes that is the ray kurt wild's estimation in the future year 2045 the card wire estimate the uh, artificial intelligence is uh, uh, beyond the our human natural brain. Uh, the most, most fearful things is that um, artificial intelligence create their own new artificial intelligence. Uh, that would be terrible. <laughs> mm. uh, in regard to this singularity, mm -hmm. I would like to ask you, mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, uh, only Google or Facebook have the mm -hmm. computing resources to to, mm -hmm. to to reach maybe that that level of uh, intelligence. Mm -hmm. So, uh, assuming that uh, we have to reach singularity at that time, mm -hmm. uh, so how big mm -hmm. the I mean data center or uh, computing power is required to to have that kind of artificial intelligence? Do you think? Do you know the uh, big there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now what then? There are 150 zeta byte of the data in the world. And uh, um, twice, twice much data will be generated within the two years. 
So uh, 45 to 2045, uh, we would have the around the 1,000 of zettabyte, 10, 10 to the 21 byte is a zettabyte. You know, so that the, imagine that, huge um, data set are existing at that time and uh, manipulate all these big data, we would have the uh, huge computer resources with the quantum computing machines. So it will so, be quantum computers, not the kind of computer that we have today. Yeah, we do have the TPU. Tensor, Tensor. Processor Tensor. unit, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, which give us the uh, huge computer resources so that the, we can uh, create the huge computing systems with the uh, TensorFlow processing unit. That is the current status. And the quantum computing facility will be available within a couple of years. Couple of years. Yeah, it's very, mm, very soon. Somehow scary in my opinion, because uh, mm -hmm. uh, who will have access to this? facilities, only big companies we have access on that, right? Not common people, not me. No, no, no. no, no. So it is not scary, scary, scary. It is scary. Yeah, it's very scary. Yeah, you are right. And uh, also, um, in, there are so many private keys and uh, Private key is that um, it's difficult to um, encryption of the private key. Mm -hmm. But quantum computing facility mm -hmm. will so encrypt the private key immediately. It's very careful. So maybe you have to increase the from 256 bit into maybe a uh, maybe I don't know mm -hmm. I don't know triple yeah. it or quadruple it but still it will be meaningless right yeah yeah it's meaningless uh well in, how yeah in many AI researchers is now creating the human brain emulator as well as the human brain architecture it becomes AGI general progress of the artificial intelligence and uh, ASI and for the super super means the beyond the natural human brain mm, it's very careful Well, that was very nice uh, to have your lecture mm -hmm. and student uh, see that student is still having problem to fully understand your lecture. Mm -hmm. But I still believe that they still learn a few or more. Mm -hmm. I myself learn a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, We are very happy that uh, we can hear your lecture today, Arai Sensei. And we also hope that there will be next lecture, mm -hmm. maybe discussing a more interesting aspect such as uh, regression. Mm -hmm. And maybe in I, we, I'm thinking about uh, ranking also. 
Oh, I see. Ranking using artificial intelligence is also uh, one possibility. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That would be nice. That would be nice. So I yeah. think uh, we shall conclude this mm -hmm. lecture. Okay. And I will uh, again return the the microphone, the floor to Ibu Debbie. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Pak Noval and Professor Kuhei Arai. Mm -hmm. mm, ladies and gentlemen, now we are in the end of our agenda today. Before we close our activity, let's recite Hamdalah together. Alhamdulillah, Alamin. We hope that all the knowledge we receive today can give a lot of beneficial for us in the future. Once again, I would like to say thank you very much for uh, Professor Aray Sen, Aray, Professor Aray, uh, mm -hmm. for the lecture today, and mm -hmm. for all the participants who gives a lot of enthusiasm in today's public lecture. That's mm -hmm. all for public lecture of artificial intelligence based classification methods. See you again in another occasion. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. Kita perlu Thanks. foto enggak Pak ya? Ya, ya, foto. We need to have a lot of pictures, uh, Arai Sensei. Mm -hmm. Please activate your camera, please, everyone. Sure. This is my photo. Sehat, Nom? Alhamdulillah, Pak. Sehat. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Pak Harul, please please take picture. Pak Harul atau Ibu Debi terserah. Yeah. Please lead the photo session. Sudah bu? Bentar pak. We have two pages. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it winter already in Japan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's it becomes cold. <laughs> mm. How about yes. snow? Snow mm -hmm. is already coming. Yeah. Uh -huh. Your <laughs> your friend. Uh, Fritz Hadi-san mm -hmm. is now here in Saga Prefecture. She will <laughs> be surprised when the uh, snowfall comes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's very cold. I think he's around. He's in here. Mm. Yeah, he's in here. Faisal oh. Hadi-san. Participating as well. I yes, yes. Ah, I see him. <laughs> oh. yeah. Hadi San is there. Huh? Hadi San. I think <laughs> because <laughs> not nice, say. <laughs> wow. Konnichiwa, Konnichiwa. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't speak because not be allowed to buy host. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the uh, very interesting lecture today. You are it's, always uh, welcome. Mm -mm. It's very interesting, I think. Uh, so give uh, maybe many ideas for the student mm -hmm. and the new student to to conduct the the, the uh, project. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's a good idea. Idea. The next time, I think the dean of the of the dean of the faculty of engineering. <laughs> Uh -huh. Hermizar, son. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Can yeah. follow, I... yeah, follow up this uh, uh, this meeting uh, to another term, I think. Yeah. Thank you very um, much. Yeah. Yeah. In Saga, yeah, the call is coming. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> are you are the sweeter. <laughs> It's cold. Yeah. In the morning. In the early morning. Yeah. Very cold. 
So start start winter session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe the peak says peak is in uh, December. December, I think. December, yeah. Supposed December to be this December. Or, uh, January. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I do expect some discussion with your lecturers mm -hmm. for our collaborative research work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did yeah. have the um, a plenty of the topics, research topics, so that the next time we'll be able to discuss the collaborative research topics and conduct the cooperative oh. research work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do I yes. 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 Sure. Arisan, we are really, really want to encourage all our academic to mm -hmm. do collaboration research mm -hmm. with uh, academic all over the world. Maybe it's mm -hmm. very good chance uh, to have uh, research collaboration with with uh, academic from Saga University, especially mm -hmm. uh, research under uh, Sensei Arai. I think. Okay. 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 Yeah, that might expect. Yes, yes, sure. That's all for now. That's all for now. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank See you, you again, everyone. See you again. Thank you. Konnichiwa, Ari Sensei. Konnichiwa. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. I speak Japanese. I should learn Japanese. Yeah. Arigato gozaimasu. Okay, everyone, see you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye bye. Hey, Pak Mizar, kalau bisa ada kerjasama gitu. Ya, saya nunggu aja dari Pak Dekan, Pak Faisal, kira-kira apa yang bisa kita bikin. Nanti yeah, kita yeah, follow up. Saya follow siap follow up lah. Kita follow up. Oke, okay, oke, okay, oke. Okay. Yeah. Kalau bisa mulai ini kan? Ya, ya. Nah, nanti coba saya lusuri di sini kalau bisa kerjasama buat kerjasama dulu nanti ya. di apa diaktualkan dengan ini kan ya nanti bisa kita arrange lah ya, manajemen meeting atau apa gitu mm -hmm. oke okay. ya ya sip sip oke okay. mana parol dari biar di close down zoom Itu meeting ini pesertanya Ya, semua ya. Mana? Enggak ada. Di ini nih, di publish juga. Ya, pamit ya. Semuanya.